All right, guys, good morning. So part two of the engine rebuild, I have uh, the new bolts that came in right here for the flywheel. Those are right here. Um, and then obviously I got the uh, new torque wrench right here. So I will see you a bit in the garage. Well, you guys know the drill, it's Yugo time. All right, guys, part two of the engine rebuild. Got the new bolts, got the new torque wrench. Hopefully things go a lot smoother today. So the new bolts. Pair them with the old ones. If you want to see what happened last week, that's what happened. So over torqued. Look right on size to me. Now these have a flange. I don't think that'll affect anything. I know the flywheel needs to be balanced, but given the fact that all of them have a flange, and I've seen flywheel bolts that have flanges, I don't think that'll affect anything. Uh, I did buy some extras just in case. Uh, yeah. This wrench is a lot nicer, by the way. It's a Craftsman. I know they're not made in the U.S. anymore, but price-wise, it's kind of the best they can do at the moment. Now, when I tried finding these bolts, like actual Fiat ones, they wanted to charge like $80, $90 for them. No way I'm paying that. I ended up finding uh, the bolt sizes online, like 10 bucks or something, including shipping domestically. Uh, another thing, again, I guess this is called actual exotic flips. If you're working on vehicles that weren't met for the U.S. market, a lot of the times you could still find parts for it if you don't necessarily look for that make or model, if that makes sense. So, for example, like something like fasteners, you don't need to get the OEM fasteners or just fasteners as long as you know the specs. There's a lot of other things like that, even like oil filters and stuff or brake pads or if it fits, it'll probably work even if it wasn't technically for your vehicle. Thirty-two. Thirty-two. Woo, my old torque wrench was off. Holy crap. Thirty-two. It's thirty-two. <laughs> thirty-two. So let's go around again, make sure I got them all. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why you don't cheap out on your tools. Jeez. All right, air compressor's going. I don't know if you can hear me. I'm gonna do a little time lapse here. So basically, I'm gonna retorque everything with the new wrench, make sure everything's good to go. You've already seen me do that once. You don't need to see me do that again. And I'll get back with you. Good thing is flywheel's on, at least on that front, everything's good. Hopefully I can get the new bearings in. I think they'll work now that everything will be torqued to the right spec. I will see you in a bit.
Alright guys, back. So I figured out why the crankshaft didn't turn. I did all that off camera again. I don't want to bore you guys and uh, it was kind of frustrating. So in the book it says that there's these numbers stamped on the connecting rods and the cap ends. And if you can see this picture right here, those numbers look very clear. I did not see those numbers at all, so I just assumed the books were a 95, this is a 96, they all look the same anyway, no big deal. Well, if you look really closely, if I can even find it here, extremely closely here, you can see the number 4 is kind of stamped in there very lightly, and the same thing for the actual connecting rod side as well. So basically, these all have to go back in the same order, and like I kind of know it, but again, I couldn't find these until I literally had to look at a flashlight, or I used the flashlight on my phone, I had to look at it really closely. And sure enough, these were all in the wrong order, and that's why it wasn't turning. So very stupid beginner mistake. I'm glad I caught it before anything bad may have happened. And uh, I ended up putting the new bearings back in, because that's definitely not the problem. This is all taken apart. Might as well put new bearings in, I have them anyway. So... I'm going to get the last one put back in, get it torqued down, and then move on to getting to the next step with this engine. Thankfully, I am so sick of chasing my tail here, it'll definitely be nice to move on. And good. So... Make sure that this thing actually cranks now. Smooth, baby. Everything's done the way it should, everything's turning, and that's what happens when you actually follow the directions properly. So, let me get this pickup oil pan back on real quick. Usually they say with these, or at least from what I've read, to use some oil on these rings so they actually seal. just because these sizes are kind of wacky basically what I'm thinking if we look at the pressure plate here and the clutch they kind of line up pretty evenly so what I'm planning on doing if I can put it in with this aligned then I should be good to go All right, I'm pretty happy with that. So basically what I did, you can see the wear where the old clutch was rubbing. And like I said, the way the splines and the shafts and everything are, it's said in the book to eyeball it. I'm not lying. Literally, if you read here, the nose of the input shaft does not run in a bearing or bushing in the crankshaft or a flange. Normal alignment tool cannot be used instead of centralized driven plate. Within the tips of the diaphragm springs by eyeing or cutting a paper disc the fit within the tips of the finger. Literally says to, and I quote, by eye, uh, within the tips of the diaphragm spring fingers by eye. Yeah, so. Push up bearings and then push up splines for the transmission. So, basically you can kind of see here, there are the grooves. Um, I don't even know if you can see in there. But basically, if you look really close, 
you can see the little ring on the outside around where the clutch is going and I just made sure that was perfectly centered so that should be perfectly centered all the way around and I could see the wear of where the old one kind of was um, and I'm happy with that should be good to go again it's not necessarily the preferred method I would have liked to use but it <laughs> Just like anything else with this car, it's full of surprises, and hopefully it's done, and I don't have to worry about it again. So let's get the rest of these bolts put in and move on to the next step. So next step, it says to do cylinder head. I'm going to put the oil pan on just to get that out of the way. And that way I can turn things around with all, all this sticking out. Um, and then the bottom end of the engine should be completely done at least. So I don't have to worry about that. So I have some gook here. So this never came with like an oil pan gasket. So basically what I need to do is just smear on RTV because it's that's what the book says. So we're eyeballing things and we're using RTV because that's what you're supposed to do. Now I did not put a new clutch in here. The one that was already in there looked good. I have already spent enough money on this vehicle as you know. No point in just throwing parts out at this point. The big issue was that it needed to be bored over and I guess the head was out of it. So just take care of what's wrong, nothing else. Now, if I planned on holding on to this for a while, maybe. Um, I'm definitely a believer that if you drive your car correctly, you don't, shouldn't have to go through that many. I don't think I've went through a clutch in any of my vehicles. And like my truck, for example, is getting close to 200,000 miles. Bore should be clean, so I might just put another little bit of oil in there, so let's see. Just a tad bit in there. There we go. Head gasket, so I did replace it a while ago, but whenever I take a head off, I feel like it's always a good idea to replace the head gasket regardless. 
I'm gonna go bring the head over here. This is the new head. Resurfaced. I was told it was six out, out, which is definitely out of tolerance. That is the old head gasket. We're gonna pitch that. These are the head of bolts. Some dowels here again to make sure the surface is nice and clean. Alright, as you can see, I got the head on, everything's torqued down, good to spec. Uh, next step, at least according to the instructions, is to get this little water pump on there. So I will get that done next. I need to grab some RTV though to get this on, it's another one of those. No gasket, use RTV, which I find odd. Uh, this is another part off of the engine that kind of tore off, so I have to buy a new one of these anyway. I'm going to take a lunch break. I will get back to you once I get these things and hopefully we can get everything put back together. Alright guys, next step. So according to the book that I have, the next thing we need to do is install the water pump. I just got back from my little uh, lunch, late lunch break, I should say. So feeling refreshed, good to go. So far things have been going, I guess, as smoothly as they can be. So this is the water pump pretty tiny thing it literally says to use RTV you can see that's what's on here so I will peel this off put new RTV on get this bolted down and move on to the next step just like we've been doing all day I find it very odd that there's holes for something else here. There's nothing tapped in here, so that's kind of what I've been looking at. I'm assuming just one nut. Should have right here. There we go. That should put that back on. So I don't know. I don't know if I necessarily agree with the order. It wants me to put things back on. Some things I can't do, like the alternator. I'll have to wait till the engine's actually back in the car to put that on, or else it's not going to fit. Cause we're coming in from the, the bottom. There we go. I'm sure this probably should be torqued. I imagine. So I'll find the torque spec for that. Once I find my. So I'm assuming push this, get the belt on, and then lock it down, and that probably sets everything. So that's done. I think next it wants me to put the pulley on. Uh, I would imagine it means this pulley right here. 
issue is with that, uh, might want to do that when it's in the car. I have other reasons for that um, because of the way the AC set up. I'll probably wait. I can get the timing belt on, but as far as the accessory belt, it would probably be better to do that with the engine back in the car. So I changed my mind. This is the timing belt here. So that goes on like that somewhat. I still need to put, there is a gear that needs to go on here, um, but that's not going to be done right now. Let's get that on there. So basically, timing belt goes here, and then the accessory belt, everything's sideways. So this goes on, and this is actually a pain in the butt, uh, so it might not be a bad idea to get it taken care of now. Just making sure we're at top dead center. Don't really want to have to dink with timing today, so if I don't have to, I don't really want to. That's there, I'd imagine the other three bolts, by the way, this is how I got everything back in the machine shop. I'm assuming these three I probably left in here and they probably took them out. So. Nope, I'm wrong. It's running even the right thread. Must be something head related. Ah, I bet you that's for these. Alright guys, thank you for watching this episode of Actual Exotic Flips. I'm going to cut it right now just for time's sake. I still have a bit more footage, so on the next episode I will cover the intake, the exhaust manifold, as well as putting the camshaft, a couple other odds and ends, getting everything mounted and mated. So thank you again for watching, and I will see you next time.